Baby Abe was not sleeping for us last night, so I thought I would get up before dawn and review the GV70 Electrified, the fully electric variant of the already excellent GV70. This thing is an absolute rocket, and I can't wait to show you all the cool things about it here at night with its illumination, and the roads are pretty empty, so we can have some fun with it. Let's get into it. <laughs> All right, the parallel lights on Genesis, it's their trademark as well as this large Bentley-like grille. But one of the big things you'll notice here, and this is similar to the G80 Electrified, is the grille is not porous. We have a fully solid grille there, and this is where you charge the guy, all right? I believe it's around 10 kilowatts on AC charging and 250 kilowatts or so on DC fast charging. It's one of the fastest uh, charging vehicles on the market. Like how it says battery charge there as well. This runs off of Hyundai and Genesis E, GMP. It's not on the platform itself, but the technology is shared with the E, GMP platform, which is Hyundai and uh, Genesis and Kia's electrified platform. Now this, like I said, this is based off the gas vehicle, but it does have the 800 volt charging architecture and battery setup here. Around 77 kilowatt hours or so. We'll talk about what the type of range I'm seeing. Genesis says you'll get around 230 miles of range or so. This is one of the, I want to say there's about five new colors this year for 2024. But one of my favorite things is check out these white calipers. Why would you put white calipers? on a vehicle when I first saw this. I'm like, you know, that thing's gonna get full of brake dust before I know it. Not so fast. Electric vehicles have so much regen going on with their electric motors for their braking. So they hardly ever use the friction brakes. And that's how you can get away with amazing white calipers. They look so cool here. As we come to the back, I mean, it looks, most people wouldn't expect it to be electric. That's how incognito this is. It's how similar it looks to the standard GV70, except we don't have any exhaust ports back here. Not only that, it doesn't even say all wheel drive. It doesn't say electric or anything. It's just Genesis GV70. It's super unsuspecting. And then it'll roll off a of zero to 60 in about four seconds. We'll, we'll test that out here in a little bit. So let's get on the inside now. I could turn this off and it does have its own chimes. So let's go and do that. Smart, smart lock on the driver and passenger side, but not on the rear. So auto folding mirrors here. And here it is, the car's fully off. So we walk up, what's going to happen? Okay, mirror immediately pops out. Door handle illuminates. Headlights are not on yet, all right? As we open the door, there's a Genesis logo, kind of the cross marks of the parking lines there. Genesis logo sprayed onto the asphalt, and then we get a really bright ambient lighting experience as we walk into the cabin. All right, when you start driving, it dims down a bit, which I like. Let's go ahead and sit on the inside. And let's go ahead and start this bad boy up. Pretty cool. Nothing too crazy. I should probably turn off the radio. I think I had it down all the way, but Genesis, I think, is one of those cars that always starts the radio up when you get in. There's probably a way to defeat this. All right, so the camera's looking at the large 14-inch screen. That's the default screen. I can get straight into some of the EV stuff. It tells me my range, and if I turn off the climate control, I only gained about two miles. There's also more information here for EV... Let me zoom in for you. EV uh, battery status, so it'll tell you how fast it'll take to charge from its current state if you're going if you're using 800 volt or 400 volt charging. It's pretty fantastic, and in fact, I don't know if I've seen this screen before. Um, so there's there's just so many menus in the Genesis system, and despite that, it is super easy to use. All right, um, using the rotary dial, it is touchscreen as well, but the screen is so far away that using it as a touchscreen is very difficult. So I just use the rotary dial right here for all that. And then you also have the touchpad on top of it, which 
I'm not going to be using. Unfortunately, I don't know if there's a way to take off that built-in split screen. So your 14-inch screen is now down to a 12-inch screen, but it still looks pretty pretty crisp, pretty clear. Some people complain about the screen on the dash and how it just kind of sticks out. I think it looks good. I've seen much worse implementations of screens before. Behind the steering wheel, you guys will see this a lot more um, because I have a GoPro set up right here. We will have a different view today, just trying out something new if you guys like it. As you can see, I'm getting 3.6 miles per kilowatt hour in town. I'll multiply that times 77 kilowatt hours or so. That'll give us over, I think it's over 260 miles of range, something like that. Again, that's mainly in town. I also have paddle shifters. And you can see that uh, down here, it tells me um, what kind of regen is going on. Um, and then there's the eye pedal. I prefer to have zero or one regen just because I'm not a one pedal driver. Hyundai and, and Genesis does it pretty well here for one pedal driving. Again, it's just not my cup of tea if I can help it, especially when this has auto brake hold. It does a great job bringing the vehicle to a stop and keeping it at a stop. All right, so you see this purple lighting in here. It is customizable. Here we go, lights, ambient lighting, brightness here, dimmed in the dark. I prefer that, but I can also brighten it here in the dark. I don't know, I'll probably keep it somewhere in the middle for the video today. It's gonna show up no matter what. Um, and of course you can pick tons of different colors here. Um, here's some yellow. I, I kind of like the yellow. The purple and yellow is pretty cool, but you can only pick one color. Now there's additional ambient lighting, let's say inside the door handle, but the door handle, it, it shows up blue on the camera, but it is more of a white light. Um, we also have some of that ambient lighting over here behind the steering wheel. And there's none of that ambient lighting in the back. However, there is accessory lighting around the window switches, uh, the rear climate control, I didn't even get in the back seat. Just watch maybe other Genesis GV70 videos of mine if you want to learn more about the back seat in here. It has pretty cramped leg room. It does have sunshades here and it does have heated outboard seats on this. I think we're in the Prestige model, which comes in over $70,000. We'll talk about pricing at the end. All right, uh, typical Genesis touchscreen down here for climate control. Um, I guess I didn't. Oh, let's just go ahead and go back to uh, Sapphire Violet and let's get back into Android Auto. But you know what? I think what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go home and I like how there's a shortcut for the home button right here. Toyota or Lexus, for example, there aren't shortcuts really to get out of Android Auto and back into the main software. But anyways, we're going to get into the, the EV portion. And remember, we saw that cool uh, energy information. Uh, electricity use. Maybe I'll keep that up for the video today because I find it pretty fascinating. Steering wheel is fantastic. Volume control over here. We also have your men men menu swiping and then this is going to be your preset. So volume and presets are all on the same side which is pretty nice. And you also have the boost button down below which we'll play with of course today to get 483 horsepower whatever it is and 513 pound feet of torque. Is this massive amounts of power. I love this interior, this kind of uh, whited out interior. It is really, really pretty and you'll be able to see some of its greatness at night, but really it comes alive during the day as well as the panoramic roof, which you won't be able to really see on camera. All right, let's start driving the all wheel drive standard GV70 electrified. I didn't mention the ambient lighting also goes into the shifter right here and it's also along um, the center console as well there's just so many details in here and i think genesis did a great job even ambient lighting and felt through uh the storage uh arm console here it's just they did so many things right i hadn't didn't even talk about these buttons which guys the the heating and cooling in here is pretty darn good i just kind of keep it on auto of course you have heated ventilated seats heated steering wheel. there's just so much going on on this vehicle uh, of course, we have a 360 camera as well. So if I put it into reverse, um, the dial goes to red instead of purple. And the 360 camera is still pretty clear here at night, although we do have fantastic lighting. Um, now, it is foggy, so we're going to have to put on some warm defrost here to make sure you guys and myself have a good driving experience. I didn't even mention the head-up display either. Uh, which is pretty good. It's not the biggest, but it is clear and it is bright. And that's what I want the most of is clarity and brightness. 
Um, the ride quality in the Genesis GV70 maintains like just like it does. It doesn't feel much different actually in ride quality, even though it's heavier than the twin turbo V6 or the turbo four cylinder. All right, come on defrost. As we wait for the satellites to pick up the drag meter to do some zero to sixties. Um, yeah, it's quiet in here. Acoustic glass, of course, up here. Uh, the windshield, I don't hear like anything coming through the windshield area. It definitely has active sound control. It's very, very isolated in here. Um, however, this road, it's not perfect. I do get some vibrations coming through, but it's totally acceptable because pretty much every luxury vehicle or any vehicle I drive on this surface, it is a bit bumpy. Oh, yep, yeah, it finally found a satellite. So we're going to do a U-turn here and I do have a blind spot view monitor. So when I put on my uh, turn indicator, the blind spot monitor uh, camera comes up. I can, words are tough and no sleep. All right, so here we'll do a couple zero to sixties. We're just in uh, normal mode and go. Oh my gosh, it's absurd. There's 60 and it just keeps pulling pretty well. Uh, that's zero to 60 and 4.61. Guys, that's just normal mode. All right, I haven't even touched the boost button. Now this is still one of the fastest cars I've ever tested on the channel. Um, zero to 60, I think I was able to crack. It might've been four seconds. All right, now we're going to well, here's the crazy thing. I could even leave this in eco mode and then press the boost button, which overrides eco mode. And then I have my full power. So we're on to boost mode and it changes the gauges and go. Oh my gosh. Huge difference and immediate torque that it gives you. Holy smokes. You guys hear that little chirp? <laughs> Zero to 60. If you want to press a boost button anyways, and 3.85 and zero to 100 kilometers per hour in 4.09. I, and that was slightly, there was a slight up, uphill, 0.2% uphill, right? Florida doesn't really have hills, at least where I'm at. So any differences in the slope is to channel water. All right, so if you ever in Florida, here's a little Florida man knowledge. If you're in Florida and you look down the road, you'll see the road kind of uh, weaves up and down. It has some rolling, very small rolling hills to it. And that's so water does not flood the streets. All right, so let's just throw this in the turn. Yeah, feels pretty good, feels pretty good. Uh, not too much body roll. Again, battery electric vehicles, that heavy battery sitting on the bottom and it feels pretty, pretty planted. Um, sport mode might tighten things up a little bit, but that's not what this vehicle is for me. All right, even though it comes standard with zero to 60 under four seconds, this vehicle is all about smoothness, luxury, quiet, and just kind of being a, a well-rounded luxury car. As I hit my head to back and do this headrest, for example, it's super soft. I, Genesis has some of the softest headrests. I freaking love them. Lights. Um, these lights are okay. The light uniformity is it's all over the place, um, especially at my 11 o'clock position. It kind of just it it's just drops off. I mean, I'm also driving this week at GMC Acadia. That thing is some of the most brightest and most uh, uniform lights I've ever seen on the channel. Now oncoming traffic might absolutely hate those vehicles because <laughs> the lights are so bright and they shine up so high. All right, so um, let's go ahead and test the, the brights here as well. Oh, there goes, my, there goes my drag meter. I wasn't even throwing it in the turn hard. That was a bit dramatic. All right, now that we're out of street lamps here, the brights, ah, they're adequate. I, they get a passing grade here for sure but I feel like it, br it brightens really nicely for the first 100 yards or so. And then it's just kind of a dim light, kind of a glow everywhere else. All right. Um, there is a noticeable difference between high beams and low beams. So I appreciate it. And the high beams also kind of fill out that, that lack of light at my 11 o'clock position where the low beams just aren't, aren't spreading that light for some reason over there. Um, but yeah, it's good. The lights are fine. They're not, they're not anything to, 
to complain about or to praise that they're going to they're going to get the job done all right so yeah my miles per kilowatt hour have gone down a little bit after a couple zero to 60s but overall still i think it's a pretty efficient vehicle in town despite giving you whenever you want it um, about 500 horsepower the ride quality is fantastic the exterior and interior design is fantastic here on the gv70 um, maybe one thing to complain about is that my phone for Android Auto has to be wired still. I can't believe Genesis, I mean, they're so tech savvy, the Koreans, but they haven't figured out how to bring Android Auto and Apple CarPlay wireless into their best selling products yet. It just doesn't make sense. I think I, I, I might take a stab here. The refresh GV80 with the new screens and stuff, I think that has wireless Android Auto finally, but that's not this car, so we're still waiting on it. Um, now, this will probably get another refresh. Genesis doesn't really know what to do with, and they're not the only ones, but you know, they said that they're gonna be fully electrified with new products by 2025, but I think they're, they've gone back on that because I mean, the market is just so fickle right now with electric vehicles, hybrids. Maybe they come out with some fantastic hybrids in the near future um, for Genesis. It's just hard to say, we'll, we'll find out. But this vehicle, as a result, could get keep getting refresh and extended lifespan. And that's okay, there's, there's nothing, I mean, just the tech, I guess, is the only thing you would need to update. And really, the only thing I want as an update is Give me the ability to take off this split screen here in Android Auto, which there might be an ability right now. I just don't know about it because, again, there's a lot of menus in here. And give me uh, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto Wireless. Really, other th everything else this car does well. I mean, it could use a, a newer head-up display, but uh, I guess I'm just nitpicking at this. I'm trying to find things that I don't like about it. Maybe, maybe give me a digital rearview mirror or something. I'm trying to find things that, to complain about this vehicle. And I guess I can find one, and that's the price. This thing is stickered at like $76,000. Is it worth it over the gas models? And the answer in my opinion for that money is absolutely not. But if you can lease it, get the uh, EV tax credit loophole, maybe also get a big uh, discount off of the MSRP on top of the lease discount, because I'm seeing that in my area, um, then you could have a very, very affordable lease option here. And that's kind of what I recommend for most electric vehicle buyers. Don't buy them, lease them. No one really knows what the true value of an EV is on the secondhand market. So you, you know, if you wanted to get rid of the vehicle in a year or two or three or whatever, you, it's just uh, your, the value of these things is going to plummet like a rock and i've seen that in the g80 electric which guys this this G, gv70 electric and the g80 electric for luxury suv and sedan they're some of the best cars i've ever driven but are they worth the msrps especially when you know on the second hand market they drop like a rock in terms of resale value that's it's just not smart to buy them it's you're best off leasing them all right you're seeing um, over the last few days here, um, 2.5 miles per kilowatt hours when they dropped it off. So that should give you an idea of actual maybe highway fuel economy. So maybe I'll put that, I say fuel economy, energy efficiency. I'll put that, what that would be in, um, range times a 77 kilowatt hour battery. But I'm able to get three, 3.5 to 3.7 miles per kilowatt hour pretty regularly. Now I haven't been cranky in the AC. I've been driving the, this vehicle mo mostly early morning time when I haven't needed tons of air conditioning. So that being said, uh, Genesis, fantastic job. So I'm gonna put the steering assist on here because I'm half asleep still. Um, fantastic job on the GV70. It's exactly how I remembered it. Luxurious fast smooth quiet good ride good tech cool ambient lighting uh beautiful leather interior oh the lexicon sound system it's great i'd give it an a it, it, it gets almost too loud for me so i'm happy about that um and you know the bass is pretty good it doesn't it doesn't hit the lowest of lows but 
the, the bass notes that it does hit is very satisfying. The mids and highs are great too in this lexicon system. Uh, so Genesis, again, keep up the good work and I'm excited to see what you do with the GV70, not only the electric version, but the gas versions in the future as well. If you guys made this far to the video, thank you for watching. Uh, also, if you enjoyed it, smash the like button and subscribe for more uh, nighttime reviews. I love doing nighttime reviews. I don't love not being able to sleep through the night, but you know, with a six month old, he's six months old today, you know, he started off as a great sleeper for the first couple months and then it's, he started teething and uh, it's just been anything but consistent uh, on the sleep end for the parents. <laughs> so, all right, I got to cut myself off. Thank you guys. Have a good day. Peace. Get some sleep.